យើងកំពុងតែស្ថាបនាអាវុធចំណងថ្មីដើទូទម្លាក់គ្រាប់បែកវាប្រហារយៈចំងាយឆ្ងាយដែលអ្នកនឹងឃើញនាពេលឆា
with the rollout of the aircraft now expected in nearly 2022, according to officials. If that timeline is kept, then a first radar would likely take to the air in the late spring or early summer of the same year. As expectation grows, the Air Force has fed up servers with only major tidbits, providing an idea of how the B-21 is likely to look, but these two have been somewhat cryptic. Regardless, a sprawling facility at Edwards Air Force Base in California awaits the bomber's testing program, which will be run by the already stood up B-21 Combined Test Force. Long term, the US Air Force expects the B-21 to enter service at Ellsworth Air Force Base in Dakota sometime in the mid-2020s, followed by White Man Air Force Base in Missouri and Dias Air Force Base in Texas. The B-21 will be more than just a bomber. It will eventually be an optionally manned, nuclear-capable, multi-role strike and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platform that will enable other platforms as well as be enabled by other platforms as part of a family of advanced systems. Beyond knowing that it will be a high-flying design that traces its roots to the B-2's early development, it will possess broadband low observability, next-generation stealth technology, and it will be smaller than its B-2 progenitor. Specifics remain very limited. One thing that is apparent is that it will leverage many mature subsystems and sensors that are either in production or already or have had major risk reduction work done on them. Overall, it will be much more flexible and adaptable than the B2 as well. In other words, this should be an incredibly remarkable weapon system. Yet for some, being able to survive in enemy airspace would it be what impresses them the most about it? Developing it on budget and on schedule and producing it in large numbers will. <laughs>